As leaders, don't ever forget that the way you see someone, the way you believe in someone, is going to have a huge impact on how they live and perform for you. And I'll tell you, a lot of people are just dying to find someone who believes. And, you know, a lot of times people don't like hearing it, but a lot of my work, even with pro golfers and basketball players or the field goal kickers I work with, I mean, they just want someone they can talk to and who believes in them. And, you know, a lot of kids go to school and teachers don't think they're that smart. Or they play in sports and have a lot of coaches who don't believe in them. And we've all had them. And yet it's, it's a huge, huge part of life. So one of the messages is surround yourself with people who believe in you and make sure you believe in people that you hire. And I mean, and treat them the way you treat. And, and what we find when we study this self-fulfilling prophecy is the quality of the feedback you give people you believe in is different. The quantity of the feedback, the emotions that you use when you're talking to people that you believe in is different. And I, I think there's nothing more fun than bringing people along. Um, you know, the first time I ever came to New York to give a talk, um, the first time I ever came to New York, it probably came with Dan. We went to see Willie Persons play basketball. Um, and as a matter of fact, we, we went, there was a kid who played on our team, and we went over and saw St. John's play, and then we, we, we went to St. Peter's College. Um, and a guy named, was it Ronaldo Webster or something? Um, and it was like 10 years later or more, I came back and I, I, I gave a talk to a basketball coach's convention. Someone from Golf Digest heard my talk and asked me to go give a talk to Sam Snead and Kerry Middlecoff and Paul Runyon and Bob Toski and Davis Love and some of the great teachers of the game and players. And fortunately for me, they loved it, but, and, and my career took off in golf. But um, the first speaker at the convention I was at was a football coach named Duffy Doherty. And, you know, Duffy Doherty stood up to speak, and he says, I know I'm supposed to talk for an hour, but I only got about a minute and a half. Everyone in the room, a minute and a half? I want to hear an hour. And Duffy goes, ah, believe me, I can tell you everything you need to know in a minute and a half. And he looks at him and he says, success in sports and making championships all comes down to three bones. Everyone goes, three bones? He says, yeah, you've got to have a wishbone to dream on. You've got to have a backbone to get you through all the tough times you're sure to face if you want to be a champion. And you have to have a funny bone to get you through all the tough times they are going to try and break your heart. And then he stood up and go, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my talk. <laughs> and it's amazing, 30-something years later, after hearing that talk, I tell people, you know, the guy knew what he was talking about. He said an awful lot in a minute and a half. And because it, it, it's very true what he was trying people, to get people to understand. I had a cousin, and this kind of was good for my career for sure in learning about attitude. I had a cousin named Sal Soma who coached at Newdorf High School in Staten Island, New York. The field to this day is named after him. And from about the age of six or seven, every time he would come to Vermont to visit, he would talk about himself and his best friend, a guy who later became known as Vince Lombardi. But at the time, Vince Lombardi was the high school coach at St. Cecilia's High School in New Jersey, where he taught physics and chemistry and coached football for 17 years. Most people don't know it, but the only head coaching job Lombardi had other than St. Cecilia's was the Green Bay Packers until the last four months of his life where he was with the Redskins for four months. But he went from St. Cecilia's, he had a couple other assistant jobs. But I started hearing about him when he was seven, when I was seven. And no one else in the family was interested, but I loved sports and I couldn't get enough of my cousin. And so I'd be the only one sitting there listening, and I just loved it. Now, 20 years later, Lombardi, or more, when Lombardi wins the Super Bowl, and I find out that was the same guy my cousin was talking about. But, you know, Lombardi understood excellence. I mean, he basically, you know, that line we've all heard about for years, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. My cousin said, you know, I asked Lombardi about that line. And Lombardi's answer was, integrate another human being based on whether they won or lost a football game. He said, when I said winning isn't everything, it's the only thing, I meant making the effort to win. I meant preparing to win. 
I meant believing you could win and being committed to being the best. He says, as a result, many times we'd play our best and lose to a better team, and I'd be the first one in the locker room to pat my players on the back. And he said, other times we didn't give it our best and we lost, and I'd be the first one to kick him in the butt. But he said, you know, that's what I was about. And I think that's what's kind of neat if, if you really study Lombardi stuff. But I think to this day the neatest thing I've ever heard about Vince Lombardi was when in his autobiography, his secretary for the Green Bay Packers says he walks in the first week and they had just had a terrible losing history the previous three years. Um, he's fortunate and he's got Bart Starr, whose dad was in the military, as his quarterback. So he's going to buy into his discipline. And he goes and gives the team a talk for about 40 minutes about winning the Super Bowl and being great and committing to excellence. And he walks back through the secretary's office, into his office, closes the door, and the secretary walks in to see if he wants something to eat or drink. And Lombardi's hands are in his face. And she's like, God, Coach, are you okay? And he looks up, and he's got tears in his eyes. And he doesn't look very good. She says, what's wrong, Coach? Are you okay? And he says, yeah, he says, I'm just scared to death. I just gave the team a talk about winning the Super Bowl, and I don't know how we're going to win a damn game this year. But that isn't the image that sells. You know, we like to sell the image of everyone who excels in sport being free of doubt, free of fear. You know, they're the ultimate macho. Uh, they've never had a setback. They've never had a tough time. And it's just not the way it is. 